Will, what are you doing? Using my magic! You haven't used that in years. Why are you using your imagination all of a sudden? Because! I just... Played the... Best Superman game ever! Really? Wanna do a review of it? I don't have a choice, do I? Not really, no. Up, up, and away! You're watching the Brotherhood of Gaming, and welcome to another video game review. Some time ago, we visited a local video game shop that I was familiar with back in my early days. And while we were there, we discovered an old piece of electronic history. Superman, the Man of Steel, for the Xbox One. The original. The first one. This one. Oh. When seeing this game, a question came to our mind. Superman and video games. Are they all really that bad? Now it does go without saying that overall Superman has not had nearly as much success in the realm of gaming when compared to the Dark Knight or the friendly neighborhood Spider-Man. However, on this channel, we have done playthroughs of two Superman games. One we thought was okay, and the other... <laughs> We've also come across other Superman titles, such as Death and Return of Superman, which may have been mind-numbingly repetitive, but still entertaining, and Superman Returns, a poor man's version of Spider-Man 2. Just without the fun. There was also Injustice Gods Among Us, in which we got to unleash the Man of Steel's powers, and then there was Lego Batman 2, which was really a Superman game in disguise. The point that we're trying to make is that there does exist Superman games out there that are very playable. But, is there a Superman game out there that we could consider great? Or above average? Well, let the truth be known. This is the review of Superman The Man of Steel for the Xbox. This one. Now the first thing to point out is, I never owned an original Xbox. Nor did Gene. Not that we had any prejudice towards Microsoft, we just decided to stay faithful to familiar territory. So naturally, we missed out on the Halo train as well as any Xbox exclusives. It wasn't until a few years ago I managed to pick up a couple at a garage sale without any games or cords, and somehow managed to gather those along the way. Basically, you could say I bought it as a novelty and never really had any intention to play it. Until now. 2013. Or, 14. Why are we mentioning this? because it will play a factor later in the review. What we are trying to enlighten you to is that we have very little to no Xbox experience. Before we delve into the world of Man of Steel on the Xbox, we of course wanted to know what we were getting our hands into. After all, we are the same guys that did this. So, with that having been in mind, we went to Wikipedia for all of our answers. However, to our surprise, we found out that this game is actually very, very low on the radar. Major websites such as GameFAQs had very little to no information on this game. 
In fact, to so many people, this game may not even exist at all. Little to no coverage has been given to it, and to those who did manage to discover it, and not remarkably, they didn't like it too much. Well, of course, with this information, or lack thereof, we were a little hesitant. But we've learned one thing, that when it comes to critics on major websites, they're mostly full of <laughs> So we just disregard their feedback. However, we will be mentioning some of the problems that they had claimed that the game had, and find out if maybe, just maybe, Superman the Man of Steel might just be a highly underrated and hidden gem. As you start the game, it already may throw you through a loop, as it's unlike any Superman game thus far. It's clearly not based on anything, say like the animated series or the movie, but it stays faithful to its comic book origins. In fact, Superman fans may notice some or all of the nuances that the game expresses. Outsiders looking in may be entirely confused as to the flying cars. For those who aren't regular comic book followers, this new Metropolis was influenced by the Superman Y2K comics, which started in the year 2000, in which this particular city has advanced its technology over other states, as well as introduced Brainiac 13. The storyline features incredibly intentionally cheesy dialogue, one-liners, and conversations which were product of the Silver Age. Many Superman fans may appreciate it, while others may not. You just have to be in the style of comic book writing. It really is an interesting direction, as no game before has ever really attempted something like this. But regardless of it being able to get a chuckle out of you, the game also knows how to be serious in certain cases. The presentation is really strong. The visuals given for the time are very intriguing. Naturally, things start out fine. But of course, being Metropolis, Armageddon has to be around the corner. Lo and behold, Brainiac 13 arrives and Superman takes flight. He gives a nod to the player, and then you're in control. Now the first complaint brought up on every Superman game is just how awful the controls are. So this will be the first thing we discuss. While in the past we've played many Superman games, some controls aren't as terrible as the critics made them out to be. While others... We're gonna cover all that here. But first... How's the flying? One fancy mechanic this game offers is a ton of controlling options. I guess it was no secret that Superman flight controls weren't always easy. So Circus Freak developed many different playing styles from default, which we highly recommend, to ranged, melee, and so on. Nice to have their bases covered. By the way, Circus Freak did this one game, and nothing else. Make of that what you will. So if you didn't like the control setup, at least you had options. With the default, you use your right trigger to begin flying. The lighter you hold the button, Superman slows down. Holding it all the way will have him burst with speed. While flying, you control his direction with the left analog, as you should. Could you imagine pressing one of the buttons to do it? The right analog has Superman strafe around depending on the situation. For starters, this might take a little getting used to, as most are accustomed to this being the camera option control. It really isn't bad once you take your time and play it. You'll be flying like a master very soon. Speaking of the camera, we read a complaint from some that the camera sucks and is too focused on Superman. Well, you know what we got to say to that? Problem solved! Which restricts you from seeing any of the obstacles or enemies flying around you. Now, I know what some of you are probably thinking out there. What the? The select button? Yeah, but given the fact when you're playing a brand new game, and a brand new console for that matter, this is the point we mentioned earlier when we said that this is going to come up as a key factor later. You usually always want to try every button that you have on the controller just to know what does what. And not look dumb and make a false claim on the internet. It's true. By pressing the select key, the camera will pan out and give you a far better view. It's a neat little toy, but what about the combat? You can't have a Superman game or almost any game without a little bit of... There are two different fighting buttons, which are X and Y. X is the heavy attack, which will likely handle about any enemy you front. But this attack also knocks enemies back quite some distance. He is Superman after all. While holding different directions with the analog in combo with the heavy attack, Superman will use various strikes from overhead smash to backward roundhouse. About 90% of the time these enemies will be destroyed, either the attack or impact against something. But you will learn that some enemies, specifically the bigger looking ones, 
you will have to want to damage with weak punch a bit to drain them of any chance of surviving heavy strikes. A few of the weak punches will suffice too in destroying them. However, fisticuffs isn't your only method of attack. About 50% of the enemies will require a certain ability to destroy. Heat Vision and Super Breath will easily make quick work of these enemies without lifting a finger. While locking onto an enemy with your left trigger, the enemy locked on too will glow with a colored aura. These colors tell you the best way to deal with them. If they glow purple, Heat Vision will take them down. If they glow green, Super Breath will do the same. If yellow, anything will do from heat, ice, or fists. While the heat vision works on specific targets and obstacles, the ice breath can slow down enemies if they're too fast, or put out fires, but more on that later. We mentioned before you can lock on. Some have complained that the lock on system is broken and doesn't really work on targeting the enemies you want. And while we do sympathize as most games have finicky targeting, Man of Steel is at least more competent. It's very rare that the targeting throws you off. And even if it does, it doesn't matter in the least. You were going to take down whatever it was that you were targeting anyway. So, in a form, it does work with you. However, we never had a problem with it. With the enemy you specifically are after, it will most of the time get it right. Now I know a lot of you out there are probably thinking mm. that we're just jaded fanboys desperately looking for a good Superman game. Which we are. But... This was the honest to god truth! Look, we've had a history of tearing down Superman games in the past. It's just that this one is the game that was, well, avoided by most people. Meanwhile, we've explained the control well enough, but there's still a few more things in the category to cover. Which is environmental hazards and momentum while carrying objects. Of course, again, being Superman, your health isn't so much the trouble as it is the cities. Granted, sure, if you take too much abuse, you can be defeated. However, the enemies will set their primary target on an obstacle for you to fix. From saving people from rooftops, putting out fires, picking up heavy objects, and moving it from one location to another in certain time. During environmental hazards, you're usually given an explanation of what to do via Superman's words, and a clock time in which you need to complete the task. You can also visibly see what needs to be done. We bring this up because another complaint was the following. The timer is too short, and it was too vague what to do, which caused many people to lose and have to start the level over. Our response is it's fairly clear what we have to do. If you lose, it's called trial and error, and failing is a part of video games. Over the course of losing at a stage, you will eventually get more skilled at it, and once you apply the skills that you have learned, you will be able to overcome the challenge you face. It's challenging, but that's a good thing. The game is not just going to give you the win because you're having a hard time. It plays how old video games used to be. You had to earn the right to be called a winner. I think Mike Matei said it best. If you suck, you should lose. The momentum control comes from Superman picking up heavy objects. As you do so, the control becomes slippery, like you're on ice. The heavier the object is, the more difficult to control. But once you grasp how it's done, you can take advantage of the situation. It shouldn't take too much time to get comfortable with it. It can easily be compared to driving in the rain or on ice. You're not going to floor it in the pouring rain or bad weather. Instead, you take it slow. As you begin to approach your destination with Superman, repeatedly tap the trigger and Superman will do the rest. Simple and clean. This pretty much covers the gameplay with the exception of using your x-ray vision to find hidden objects like bombs. It's easily understood and simple to use. The various places you go to are pretty far out. Instead of the whole game being in Metropolis, the adventure will take you to other planets, outer space, and even inside the Phantom Zone. Over the course of the game, you will encounter familiar faces, friends, foes, and after game completion, you're rewarded with tons of secrets that make the replay value pretty moderate. There are nine different available Superman costumes to unlock, from the Golden Age Superman from Action Comics Issue 1, to Superman Red, Blue, 90s Mullet, Black Suit, and even Kingdom Come. There's also concept art and multiple in-game soundtracks which you can pick up from the game. Are there flaws? Sure, no game is perfect, but being this game was made over 10 years ago means it's likely to suffer some of the flaws we've had seen ages ago in the other games. It's by no means perfect, but if new developers took the system and improved on it, we might see a Superman game that could be akin to that of the Arkham series. That being said, who is this game for? Could Superman fans play this game? Man of Steel, we feel, is marketed towards the Superman faithful. 
Its nuances and references sometimes go far deeper than what an average Superman fan would know, which makes it more charming and likable to the ones that do, especially given the nature of the game with its Silver Age tone. If you were a regular with the comics and a gamer, it would be heavily enjoyed. Could non-Superman fans play this game? The same could be asked for any fandom, really. Would a non-Dragon Ball Z fan out of the blue purchase a game and be expected to enjoy it? Probably not. These games are made for specific people. It's possible that the enjoyment may be found, from an outsider looking in, but then again, the opposite can be said too, that it could be hated. Alright, now this is us assuming, but we feel that the majority of critics who judged this game back in the day were most likely not primarily Superman fans. And since this game came out just uh, several years after the disappointment that was Superman 64, well, let's just say the bad taste was still in everyone's mouths. So much so that no matter how fresh and new a Superman game might be, they went into this game expecting it to be bad and, well, in their minds, made sure that it was. In the end, it's what you make of it. The game is old as dirt and forgotten by everyone who has given a care. It's just a game, after all. But if you're a Superman fan, and you have long looked for a good Superman game, rest assured that one great one does indeed exist in the bunch. Fish around for an old Xbox, and hit eBay, and have a fun time. You've been watching the Brotherhood of Gaming. Be sure to subscribe for more video game related content, and be sure to check out our Facebook and Twitter for all of our other video game shenanigans. Until next time, keep on gaming, viewers. Well done, Superman. You have perhaps won this battle, but the war will yet be mine.